Well, to be honest with you, it's been a bit overwhelming the last few days. I even bought a new hat for my birthday. Um, I want to thank everybody who uh, sent me well wishes on the, the YouTube where you could comment. I truly appreciate it. Like I said, I've been overwhelmed. I spent actually the day of uh, responding to phone calls, uh, voicemails, emails, whatever. Um, very cool. I even went to the post office yesterday and they had a, a little sign stuck up, Happy Birthday 42nd Street Pete, I guess because of all the shit I fucking mailed through there. Uh, it's, like I said, it's been a whirlwind. Um, People ask me, uh, what are you going to do at 70? Um, honestly, I may start taking it a little, little easy. Um, I've been working since I was 16 years old. And, you know, I, this is, I would consider this work at some point. You know, doing all this other stuff is work. But um, I'm not going to slow down unless life completely slows me down somehow. And I don't want that to happen. Um, it's a funny thing. When I was 16, um, my mother... Uh, said, uh, get in the car, we're going down to the A&P supermarket. And I'm like, okay, I get in the car, go down there. I said, well, what are we going to get? She goes, we're not getting anything. You're working here from now on, and I'll pick you up at 9.30. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, that's, that's the way it was back then. And I don't think you could do that today because these kids would, would bitch and moan and shit like that. But back then, that's, you know, that's what we did. And, you know, it... Basically, you know, early on taught me a work ethic, taught me to be there when I'm supposed to be there, do what I'm supposed to do, and that, and um, that sort of segued into, you know, what I have done in the past and what I'm doing now, because I have that work ethic where I want to do the best I possibly can, you know, and hopefully I do. Um, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, in the world today, and there's a lot of bad shit going on, and unfortunately, it does, it just seems to me that nobody gives a fuck anymore, nobody really wants to go to work, um, I can't blame you because of the fucking pay sucks and shit like that, um, like I said, my thing was, I stopped working for somebody back in the 80s and decided to do my own thing, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, sometimes I made money, sometimes I lost money, um, if you guys want, I can tell hustling stories. I could also tell stories about, you know, how, what prompted me to become a mechanic for like 15 years. But that also led into me being a hustler. Um, I got to clear something up though. And Frank, I'm laying this at your doorstep. You asked me to do something on the Chiller Scream Queens and how fucking stupid it was back then. And I did. Well, it seems that we did a Candyman type of thing. We might have said, you know, Scream Queens too many fucking times. And they're having a Scream Queen invasion at the next chiller. And, of course, this is way at the bottom of the page where it should be. Because I don't understand. I mean, I know a couple of the ladies involved, and I've been friends with them for years. And they're, you know, working actresses. Um, some of the other ones I've just heard of. And some of the other ones aren't worth the fuck, to be honest with you. I mean, you're going to a show that Cheech Marin and Christy Brinkley are the headliners, so who are the fans going to want to see? That's who they're going to want to see, plus a bunch of other people. Um, I know the story behind it, and I've spoken to the promoter, and, um, you know, it is what it is. They're not going to draw, you know, honestly. They didn't draw back then, and they're not going to draw now, and I guess some of them are still working, but... Um, you know, it's sort of like, um, who cares? It's like they have this other one, uh, Drac and Countess Karina from the, the fucking Monster Channel who won some kind of award, and it's like, has anybody ever heard of these fucking people? Seriously. But I, I just, you know, hey, they're there, they're there. Maybe they'll make a couple bucks, maybe they won't. I know I got somebody there who I really despise, but I'm not even going to bring up her miserable name on camera because why give her the fucking rub? You'll see her there. She has no neck and she'll be sitting there snorting, but what the fuck? And I'm not trying to be derogatory toward women. I just think uh, the whole Scream Queen thing started with Michelle Bauer, Lenny Quigley, and Brink Stevens, and then all of a sudden every wannabe fucking actress decided to become a Scream Queen. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's not my, not my thing and not something I'd want to do. And then um, a couple people asked me, when are we going to see you? And honestly... I don't think you are unless something happens down the road. I am not doing these conventions anymore for the simple reason that I don't feel anybody should have to pay, what is it up here, 
30 bucks to come in and maybe have a conversation with me if I'm even there. Well, I'm not going to be there. What am I saying? But I think 30 bucks for one day at a certain show is a little bit over the top because really all you're doing is shopping, you know, five major DVD companies. So you're paying, in essence, 30 bucks to shop this thing. I do miss interacting with the fans. I do miss seeing my friends. But like I said, I'm not putting myself in a position where you've got to pay $30 to see me. You can see me here. Um, if they do do a Galardi Fest down the road, I would consider doing that simply because I would go in with Midnight Magazine, who puts out my Grindhouse uh, Resurrection magazine, and their own magazine, and some other stuff. Plus, it's local, and, you know, it would be cool to do that again. Um, but, honestly, the way things are going with some of this stuff, you know, where would I be? You know, even if I went to a big con like Chiller or something like that, I'd be shuffled off with, the, you know, the minor leaguers, which I am, so I don't really give a shit. But I don't really feel that my fans should have to pay to see me. And also, I don't feel that my fans should have to pay for my signature on something that I sold them, and I've never charged for my signature, and I never will charge for my signature. So that's that. So yeah, Frank, you open this can of worms, so you, you own it, okay? You own it. If you're going to Chiller, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, honestly, with Cheech Marin, I wish the fuck I could go to Chiller, but I'm not paying anybody $100 for a fucking autograph and to say hi. I Funny thing was... I was at Rascal's Comedy Club, and I was actually pulled up on stage with Tommy Chong, and I won the, the Chong Bong, and that was two weeks before he wound up getting thrown in jail. It would have been really cool if they could have teamed him up at this show, but I guess he's doing something else. But, uh, yeah, I'm huge fans of Cheech and Chong, obviously, and I've lived the Cheech and Chong lifestyle. I had the fucking big bamboo thing, which, you know, we... Rolled fucking joints. Well, actually, we, you know, the Big Bamboo album with the paper in it, we actually did roll that into a joint. I think it was about an ounce, and we went camping. And it took us three days to smoke the fucking thing between, like, seven people. So, But anyway, I had something uh, last night that some friends gave me, something green and stinky, and I woke up this morning naked in a shopping cart behind the supermarket across the street. So, hey, thanks, guys. That worked. But anyway, I'm just goofing around here today, uh, Sunday. I'm sort of burnt out. I went out with the, the Mummy and the Monkey last night, had some dinner, came back here, smoked that, wound up naked. So what can I say? But again, my sincere thanks to everybody who reached out and wished me a happy 70th. And uh, I will keep this going as long as I can, even if somebody has to wheel me in and prop me up in front of this fucking camera. So again, my sincere thanks. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spreading the word. Thanks for subscribing. And I think I'll come back at some point this week with um, bad deals that go in the basement. Uh, another side story of liquidators, because Norm, as much as, you know, he made some really fucking great deals, he made some really shitty ones right on top of it. So we should talk about that because they're pretty fucking amusing. So until then, stay safe. We'll catch you on the flip side.